Hi Pumas, it's Miss Siebels, your campus minister, and I am going to lead you in today's exam. So please compose yourself for prayer. Ad maiorum, de gloriam. We study, we work, we play for the greater glory of God. Y'all just got to see a nice shot of my cat. I hope you enjoyed that. Well, today is a very special edition of the exam because it's a feast day, right? It's the feast of all souls today, and yesterday was the feast of all saints. And today we also celebrate Dia de los Muertos, a multi-day holiday that brings together family and friends to pray and to remember family and friends who have died. We hope everyone is able to remember their deceased today in a special way and cherish their memories. But today I really wanted to talk about All Saints Day and what it means to be a saint. You saints, you know saints, right? We, uh, we've got this guy, this guy, him, her, her, and him, we can't forget about her, right? Of course, of course not. And of course we have him. We have lots of saints. But how did they become saints? And how do we become saints? People become saints through a very long and thorough process that I could get into another day. But really, we agree with our friend Thomas Merton, an American thinker, monk, and theologian who wrote, for me, to be a saint is to be myself. I'm going to read that one more time. For me to be a saint is to be myself. And now that is a little bit easier said than done sometimes, but really it should be the easiest thing we do, right? Thomas Merton is saying, in order to be all that God created us to be, to meet our fullest potential, and to become a saint, all we have to do is be ourselves. Then why is it so hard to be ourselves sometimes? Partially, I think it's because when we get older, we lose a little bit of that uniqueness. When we try to fit and contort and adjust ourselves into different groups or settings, we adjust ourselves, we change ourselves, and sometimes I think we even harm ourselves to become more like others. And we do all of this even though the best thing we can possibly be in the eyes of God is to simply be ourselves. I want to give you a little example. When I was when I was little, my big sister was my role model, my light post. Everything she did, I wanted to do. We were different as well. Like I'm a dreamer. I got lost in my head sometimes. Um, and my imagination ran wild half the day. But when I saw my sister, she was a little more controlled. Um, she was a little more reserved, and she she really thought things through before she acted. And I also saw her, she was an incredible athlete, and I just wanted to be like her. I wanted to be more like her. I thought what I was was wrong, and her version was right. So I decided I would become more like her. And I thought the easiest way to do that would be to join the same sports she did, first of all, and you know, dress like her, and act like her, and talk like her. Um, and I did this basically until I was a teenager. Until one day I couldn't anymore. And it's not because I didn't want to but because I couldn't keep playing the same sport as her because of an injury. The silly injury kept me from the sport we played together. So I, I had to join a new, a new one. And it put me out of my comfort zone. And I, when I was there, I was allowed to be myself. Not, and that was all because of my own doing, right? My sister didn't force me to be like her or tell me to be like her. It was all my own brain telling me I had to. But when I was in this new place, I excelled. I was actually really good at this new sport and I went on to play in college. And while in college, I found a career path that I liked and wanted to pursue. I made new friends in college that are now my lifelong friends. And then I went on to grad school to continue this career. And in grad school, I met my husband. And now we have a great dog and clearly we have a cat. And I have a job that I love close to my family and my friends. My sister's path was perfect for my sister. Had I continued to follow her exact footsteps, who knows where I would be right now. But I know for a fact I wouldn't be sharing this exam with you today. For me, to be a saint means to be myself. I'm still working on being myself, on loving myself and honoring myself and giving myself to God but it's a journey I'm lucky enough to stay on. What does it look like 
when you are really yourself? What is the best version of you? What brings that out? Maybe more importantly, who brings that out of you? Once you are able to honor that truest part of yourself, you're on your way to sainthood. It might be easy to see someone else's path and think, they're always gonna be better at me than blank. Or if only I was more like them, then I could. But the world doesn't need another them. You know, we already had our Mahatma Gandhi. We already needed and had our Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And this might come as a surprise, but you're not gonna be Pope Francis. We don't need another Pope Francis. We don't need another Ruth Bader Ginsburg and we don't need another Gandhi. The world needs more of you. The world needs more of you. We need Miss Flock Johnson exactly how she is. We need Mr. Hartz exactly how he is. We need Miss Martinez, both of them, exactly how they are. We need each one of you students to be fully alive and fully yourselves. And only when we do that will we set the world on fire. Take two minutes, real quick, and write down some of your truest and most you characteristics. Not ones that you put on a resume just to make yourself look good, right? Like organized and professional and whatever it might be. But what about you that makes you really you? Write down some of those. And then let's thank God for them. And try to do better at really honoring them in our lives and with each other. Amen? Amen.